Denmark, Singapore, New Zealand. Three modern, clean and relatively wealthy nations with some of the best living standards anywhere on earth, located on three different continents. Welcome back to the Geography Bible, I'm Sam, your narrator for the video. In this video, we'll be comparing three magnificent countries known for their great living conditions and high quality of life. We will compare their key demographics, geography, economy and some quality of life statistics. And of course, along the way, we will throw in some facts that you will hopefully find interesting and intriguing. So sit back, relax and we hope you learn something new. Starting off with Denmark, a Scandinavian nation located in Europe and its only land border is Germany. Next we have Singapore, officially the Republic of Singapore, which is a sovereign island city-state in maritime Southeast Asia. Its only land border is Malaysia. And finally we have New Zealand. New Zealand is an island country in the southwestern Pacific Ocean. It consists of two main land masses, the North Island and you guessed it, the South Island. It of course has no land borders. Okay, cool, so now let's jump into some key demographics, starting off with their population and their population densities. The similarity of their total populations is one of the reasons why we chose these three nations. Starting off with the least populated out of the three, New Zealand, with just over 4.8 million people and a yearly growth rate of around 0.82%. This makes them the 126th most populated country on earth, behind the Central African Republic and above another African country, Mauritania. Next we have Denmark, with 5.8 million people and a yearly growth rate of around 0.35%. Denmark is the 115th most populated country in the world, behind, you guessed it, Singapore, and above their neighbour, Finland. And finally, we have the most populated out of the three, Singapore, with around 5.85 million and a yearly growth rate of around 0.79%, making them, of course, the 114th most populated nation in the world, above Denmark and below Turkmenistan. Alright, so now that we know their populations, let's move on to their population densities. In my opinion, the lower here, the better. A lower population density means more space, less congestion, and less traffic. Okay, so this one is super interesting. Starting off with the lowest out of the three, we have New Zealand, with an incredible 18 people per kilometre squared, making them one of the least densely populated countries anywhere in the world. Next, we have Denmark, with roughly 135 people per kilometre squared. And then finally, Singapore. Are you ready for this one? Singapore has a mind-boggling 7,804 people per kilometre squared, making them the third most densely populated place on Earth, behind Monaco and Macau. What intrigues me is that I've visited Singapore before, and it didn't feel too crowded to me. I mean, it, it was very busy, there was lots of traffic, but from what I remember, some parts of London actually felt so much more crowded than Singapore. So now, let's move on to the overall life expectancy for a resident in these three countries. This is where these three countries all excel in. So starting off with the lowest, we have Denmark, at an impressive 81.4 years, making them the 32nd highest in the world. Followed by New Zealand with 82.8, making them the 19th highest in the world. And then the highest out of the three, Singapore with a seriously impressive 84 years, making them the 5th highest anywhere on earth. And then finally to end this section, let's take a look at the average age of the population. The lower here, the better, as this makes for a younger workforce and less of an aging population. So another win here for Singapore at a very young 34.9 years, followed by New Zealand at 38.1 and then the oldest out of the three, Denmark at just under 42 years. Alright, so now let's move on to their physical geography, starting off with their total land size. So as expected, Singapore has by far the smallest land size at just under 7,200 kilometers squared incredibly making them the 190th largest country on earth. Next we have Denmark at just over 43,000 kilometers squared, making them the 133rd biggest country in the world. And then finally the 76th largest country in the world, New Zealand with 269,000 kilometers squared, 
Next, let's take a look at how much coastline these countries have. So with a minuscule 193 kilometers, Singapore has by far the least out of the three. However, it must be noted, Singapore is actually home to the second busiest shipping port anywhere on the planet. Next, we have Denmark with 7,300 kilometers. And then finally, to no surprise, as it is an island, New Zealand with the most at just over 15,000 kilometers. Next, let's take a look at the percentage of their land that is covered in forest. Forests are great habitats for flora and fauna and help to remove unwanted pollutants from the air. In my opinion, forests are essential when it comes to rating a country's value. Starting off with the most this time, we have New Zealand with nearly a third of their land covered in forests. Next, we have Denmark with a surprisingly low 13% of their land covered in forest. And then again, to no surprise, we have Singapore with the least at just 3.3%. There is literally no space for forest in this urban state. Speaking of forests in Singapore, Gardens by the Bay is up there with one of my favourite places anywhere on earth. After seeing it in a David Attenborough documentary, I told myself I must visit this place, and I sure was not disappointed. If you are able to visit Singapore one day, then I highly, highly suggest chilling in this awesome area. You will also get an awesome view of the Marina Bay Sands Hotel while you are there. Alright, so now let's move on to some economy and financial statistics. This is where it gets super interesting. So starting off with their GDP, the gross domestic product, which is a monetary measure of the market value of all the final goods and services produced in a specific time period by a country. With the 50th largest economy on earth, New Zealand has a GDP of just over 204 billion US dollars, putting them above Greece and behind Peru. Not bad for a country with less than 5 million people. Although, thinking about it now, that is roughly the total net worth of Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon. Wow, to put that in perspective, that is crazy. And then next we have Singapore with just under 324 billion US dollars. Again, seriously impressive for a country with less than 6 million people. This puts them above Malaysia and just behind, you guessed it, Denmark. And finally, the highest out of the three, with just under 330 billion US dollars, we have Denmark. Putting them just behind Ireland and above our friend Singapore, so this one was super close. Now let's take a look at the GDP growth rate for these three countries. So with 2.3%, Denmark actually has the lowest out of the three. Next we have New Zealand at an impressive 3% growth rate. And then again, to no surprise, Singapore takes the win here with 3.6%. These three nations all have super impressive inflation rates, with New Zealand having the highest at 1.9%, followed by Denmark at just 1.1%, and then incredibly, Singapore at just 0.6%. And finally, for economy, let's take a look at which country has the most billionaires. Before we reveal this one, can you guess who takes the win here? With just two billionaires, New Zealand has the equal 28th most billionaires in the world. And then in equal 23rd place, we have Denmark with eight billionaires. And then finally, in equal 14th place alongside Japan, we have Singapore with 26 billionaires, which comes to no surprise as a state is known for its fantastic business culture and entrepreneurship. For billionaires per 1 million people, Singapore actually ranks as the sixth highest in the world. However, the top four on this list only have seven combined. So if we were to exclude these places, then Singapore would be second in the world, only behind Hong Kong. And finally, let's move on to the section where these three countries seriously excel, quality of living. Starting off by looking at the Global Peace Index rankings, these three countries all feature in the top 10. So in seventh place, we have Singapore, followed by Denmark in fifth place, and then New Zealand in second place, only behind Iceland. Next, let's take a look at the global happiness rankings. Now this one is a little bit different. Singapore actually ranks as the 31st happiest country in the world. Perhaps this is quite low because of the work until you die culture, similar to what can be found in South Korea and Japan. However, the other two do feature in the top 10. New Zealand is the eighth happiest country in the world, and then Denmark is officially the second happiest in the world, only behind Finland. Okay, so this next one again is super interesting. This is the Global Corruption Index. The higher you score here, the less corrupt your nation is. 
So in 16th place we have Singapore, followed by New Zealand in 5th place, and then finally Denmark in 1st place. That's right, Denmark is officially the least corrupt nation on earth. The next three countries are all also Nordic or Scandinavian countries. When it comes to adult obesity rates, however, this is one that Singapore does take the win, at just over 6% of the adult population being classed as obese. They have by far the lowest obesity rates out of the three. Next we have Denmark at just under 20% or one fifth of the adult population. And then finally, at an astonishing just under 31%, we have New Zealand, who are by far the most obese out of the three. And finally, for quality of living, let's take a look at how these countries rank when it comes to the Clean Air Index. Of course, we all know the devastating impacts of pollution upon humans, so the higher up on this list, the cleaner their air is. So, to no surprise, the most densely populated out of the three, that's Singapore, comes in 47th place, above Croatia and below Poland. Next up, we have Denmark, which comes in as having the 15th cleanest air in the world, behind Malta and above Luxembourg. And finally, New Zealand, with the 8th cleanest air in the world, behind Norway and above Canada. And finally, to end the video, let's take a look at the military power ranking of these three countries. So this is where you could say these three countries are lacking slightly. Due to Singapore's wealth, technological advancements and geographical location, they actually have the 40th strongest military in the world, behind Colombia and above Romania. Next we have Denmark in 54th place, which puts them behind Morocco and above Hungary. And then finally we have New Zealand, with the lowest military power ranking out of the three in 84th place which puts them behind Kenya and above Lithuania. Alright, so now it is your turn. Let us know in the comment section below which one you would live in, which one you would visit, and which one you would avoid. We can't wait to read your responses. And while you're there, let us know which cities or countries we should do next. I would personally live in New Zealand because I love their beautiful landscapes and living standards. I would visit Denmark because I've never been there before. And unfortunately, I'd have to avoid Singapore as I've already visited there before. However, I would absolutely love to go there again and I'd even live there. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do drop a like. And if you love this sort of content, consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you soon.